YouTube, we got another Patrick C. -C, -C. How be unscared street failed to prevent kids from being criminals? They did kind of feel. I ain't gonna lie, hit this up button, listen to the video. Beyond Scared Straight is easily one of the most controversial shows in you history. Parents of troubled youth pay for their children to tour the inside of a prison or county jail so they can be exposed to the dark reality of life behind bars. When they arrive, they meet with real inmates who strike fear into them with threats, with the goal being to prevent today's teenagers from becoming tomorrow's prisoners. But their exposure therapy techniques are definitely questionable. Why the f you, dog? Chill out. You are starting in the wrong way. It's Kool-Aid. We put this on just like you. Lick your lips. Let's stick your hand in that Kool-Aid. Just stick it in there. I ain't gonna now lie take me your personally, and do this I'm to the not bottom. putting that my hand in that Kool-Aid. Ah. I kiss you, you orange flavor mother What? You wait, wait, wait. Come on, man, you hold you with Kool-Aid. Try me, try me. Yeah, try me. I want you to try me. I want you to try me, try. Now there's no doubt that the show is entertaining. I know a couple people that could have been sick. They should have been sick for years. However, our entertainment is at the expense of children's suffering. And the craziest part is, it has been proven on multiple occasions that scared straight too. doesn't work. They, they grow In fact, now, but might actually increase their chances they of becoming lifelong criminals. A lot of people don't realize that Scared Straight is not just a television show on A and E. It's a program that has been implemented all. Hey, I ain't gonna hold y'all. If I would have got sent to Scared Straight, I would have been Scared Straight. I ain't gonna lie. I, I was Scared Straight as a kid, so I ain't need to be sent to Scared Straight. But for y'all people that sent to see it, they got sent to see shirt. Why y'all going scared? Huh? Your boy told you to put some cool lady on your lips. Now you huh. You ain't even him, you huh. That's petty. Why would he do that kid like that? But I know some people that should have been sent scared straight. All over the United States for the past 50 years. And the reason it got so popular was based on just one alleged successful experiment. I know scared Straight was the name of a television documentary released in 1978, produced by Arnold Shapiro. It was critically acclaimed, won an Academy Award, and even won an Emmy. See, they're gonna put lipstick on your lips, earrings in your ear. And I you swishing your ass up and down these tears, hustling cigarettes for your man. What? Oh, what did I say? What did I say, mother? You here for two hours? You belong to us for two hours. The film documented youth offenders who visited Rahway State Prison in New Jersey. They, they met with inmates with Jersey. the goal of being so scared of going to prison I'm that they went on to live a straight or crime-free life. The documentary claimed that 80 to 90 percent of the 8,000 children who visited Rahway's program would go on to remain law-abiding citizens afterwards. The popularity and surprisingly positive results led to more than 30 states rapidly implementing the program. No further questions were asked. Jails and prisons all over they the country saw one document documentary and thought they had a solution to all of their youth offender problems. The program's validity was immediately questioned by juvenile delinquency professionals, but that didn't stop it from becoming popular. The original documentary was followed by Scared Straight, Another Story in 1980, also produced by Arnold Shapiro. This one was just a dramatic film. The subjects were actors who did scripted reenactments of their petty crimes, which led them to entering the Scared Straight program, being screamed at, and then feeling reformed after a couple overnights in the prison. Prison. Then in 1987, Scared Straight, 10 years later, aired. I'll be your host for Scared Straight, what, 10 years what, what later. Was a, a fascinating a update on what's happened straight. to the kids and the convicts filmed a decade ago. What I steal, I need, and I want. That's embarrassing. <laughs> 10 years ago, um, yeah, I did that. I did that to look good. Now the difference is I want to look good, but I like to pay for what I take. We got to see the original 1978 crew, and they all explained how much the program changed their life for the better. The second half of the documentary introduced a new group of troubled teenagers. After their trip to Rahway State Prison, the documentary claimed that all 17 of the youth offenders were crime-free just three months after their visit. Then Ooh. MTV connected with Shapiro for another sequel. Scared Straight 99. This documentary was potentially the most raw and shocking of them all. The prisoners were threatening these kids to levels we had never seen before. One inmate made a kid hold his pocket as he walked around the cell. Hey, whoa, no, no. Have y'all ever seen uh, Breaking Bad? 
Nah, 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 nah. I'm breaking bad. I'm tweaking. I'm tweaking. Not breaking bad. I'm I'm tripping. Uh, dang, what is the name of that movie? It's a little TV series though with, with a dude trying to break out of jail. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It was one little dude. If you know, you know. If you don't, you don't. But look, it was one little dude. He made the other. He made all the new prisoners hold his pocket in jail. He did that same thing. That's crazy. Hold on to this this was highly regarded as one of the best out of the series, and people still genuinely believe this was an effective form of therapy for youth offenders. Which makes sense when you consider the societal standard during this time period. Mental health issues that are widely known today had not been vigorously studied. Mental health as a whole wasn't taken as seriously as it is now. Plus, it was a lot more common for parents to use tough love and physical punishment to discipline their children. These programs were seen as an extremely cheap and convenient solution to a very complex problem that is juvenile delinquency. But where Scared Straight received renowned media attention was when they released their 20 years later special. They claimed that of the 17 original 1978 children, only one of them became a career criminal. The 95% success rate shocked news publications. Scared Straight was a miracle solution. They used 17 people's stories for 20 years to justify this entire program around the United States. But the popular A&E series you all know and love didn't come until 2011 and was produced by the same man, Arnold Shapiro. By the time most of us became aware of Scared Straight, it had already been a well-seasoned program like all over the out, United bro. States for 30 plus years. Beyond Scared Straight was a TV show that documented the experiences of troubled children as they embarked on a forced tour of a maximum security prison or jail. During the tours, inmates and officers would go to the greatest lengths, screaming, locking them in cells, putting lipstick on them, roughing them up, anything they could do to shock the children and make them terrified of going to prison in hopes that it would steer them clear of a life of crime. What's up, you like to fight, homie? That's what you like to do, huh? You little you bitch, you's a yo. bitch, homie. You's a pop tart. I see right through you, homie. Stop! Nah, you been they not they get been pop tart. That's crazy. Hey, you a hog, you want to do hog? Hey, you go, you want to do, try me. Did you smirk at me? He Are says you? they don't know. You can't speak up, can you? Are you smirking at me? Why can't you speak me? up? Fact, bitch, you hold this. You drop it, I'll smack the out of you. I don't give a this was the most staggering and horrific scared straight program we had ever seen, and people loved it. The show's premiere alone attracted a staggering 3.7 million viewers, making it the most watched original series debut in the network's history. The undeniable success of Beyond Scared Straight led them to producing 83 episodes across 9 seasons, spanning from 2011 until 2015. But the most eye-opening realization about this show is that the Scared Straight program was proven by the federal government not to work. Since the release of the original film, Many justice institutions and criminal prevention professionals have thoroughly studied the effects of the program to determine if it actually works. Surprisingly, numerous studies have shown that the scared straight method can actually do more harm than good. The most significant study was conducted by the U.S. Department of Justice after the release of the original Film. They examined the outcomes of nine controlled trials conducted from 1967 to 1992. This involved over 900 children, with the average age of 15 to 17, who participated in scared straight-like programs in eight different states. Also, each study was conducted by a different research team. Every one of these studies also had a control group that did not attend a scared straight program. So they were comparing youth offenders who went to scared straight versus youth offenders who didn't attend one, and measured their likeliness to become a re-offender. The study found no evidence to support the effectiveness of Scared Straight in similar programs. In fact, all analysis showed that involvement in these programs increased measures of crime and delinquency. In nearly every one of the nine studies, the group who went to Scared Straight had a higher rate of re-offense than the group who didn't go. After this comprehensive study was published, many others were conducted with different
different test subjects, different age groups, and different crimes. Many of the studies would produce very similar results. In 1997, University of Maryland researchers completed a report for Congress on the evidence for various crime prevention strategies. The researchers had no problem listing Scared Straight as one of the programs that doesn't work. To make things worse, these programs could potentially violate federal law. In 2002, which was nine years before the first A&E episode aired, the Office of Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention in Washington informed all states that scared straight programs or similar programs may violate the separation requirement of the JJDP Act. According to the Act, it is mandatory that juvenile offenders and non-offenders should not be detained or confined in any institution where they may have sight or sound contact with adult offenders. In short, it's illegal to have kids in jail with adults, which makes this clip even harder to watch. Oh. A terrified nine-year-old boy dangled like a raw piece of meat in front of a pack of prisoners. Oh, they doing that to a nine-year-old? Stealing pocket change from his mom and lying. I think we can all agree that traumatizing a child to this degree for stealing pocket change That's is insane. Crazy. Then filming it, editing it, and putting it out into the world is next level. One time they even showed these children children body and describe to them what their nah, parents would experience if they go to jail and die while on the inside. These programs typically break these children I mean, down, they start crying, are mortified, and just want to go home. The sad part is, their home life is- Some of that, yeah, now, that part right there, that's, that ain't too bad, cause that's just like, telling them I, if you go do something stupid, it's just what's gonna happen, that's gonna be the consequence, but, like, Touching them, that's kind of overboard. Like, you ain't gotta touch the kids. I don't know. I don't know. I always feel like watching Beyond Scared Street. Felt like some of it was cap, but now that I'm watching this, it's not cap. It's like. Dang, bro. That's kind of messed up when you really, really think about it. And now that I'm watching this and I get like a little bit of extra information on it. Dang. Poor kids, man. Poor kids. But hey, them kids gotta stop being in trouble, man. Probably rough as well. On the surface, the concept behind these scared straight programs makes sense. Troubled kids are so afraid of prison that they change their ways to avoid such a dark future. However, there are multiple examples that say otherwise. Toby Keith Johnson was first featured on the show on season 3 episode 13. He was quiet and didn't show any emotion. The guards tried to break him down and make him feel bad about his choices, but he didn't budge. At the end, when the parents reunite with the children, Toby's mother didn't show up. Eight months later, Toby was featured on the show again. This time, he was an inmate. He was incarcerated for allegations of assaulting his mom. He got out two years later on parole, but sadly, continued a life of crime. He was arrested multiple times on meth and gun charges, but the most recent one was the worst of them all. In August of 2020, he, he was arrested for imprisoning a 25-year-old woman and making threats of harm, Bro. with Johnson forcefully grabbing the victim by the throat, choking her, and violently throwing her to the ground. The aggression continued with it, even going as far as Toby threatening her with a knife. Law enforcement would report Toby. visible signs of Toby bruising on the victim's neck. I think it's pretty obvious that Scared Straight had no positive effect Wait. on Toby. Toby, it definitely ain't had no effect on you, bro. You got teardrops. I don't know what other tattoos you got, but bro, relax. Whatsoever. Franklin Morris made his premiere on A&E in 2012. At the time one? of filming, he was living in Baltimore with his mother, Dana. In an emotional episode, Dana revealed the extent of Franklin's school suspension, stating that she couldn't even begin to what, give what a precise number. Up? Franklin himself shared a nonchalant attitude towards his mother's concern, saying, <laughs> My mother says I'm even going to end up dead on jail. I really don't you care no Franklin? At the young age of 14, Franklin participated in the program, already having convictions for gambling and vandalism. One of the incidents that landed Franklin a spot on the show well, saw I'm Franklin and his friends wreak havoc in a store, knocking items off the shelves and vandalizing. In the local shop. Years after his time on the show, Franklin Morris became one of three teenagers who met a grim fate near a playground in North Baltimore. Oh, snap. Alongside a 19 year old and a 17 year old, Franklin was found, cut in the head, and pronounced dead at the scene. Oh, see, Frank, now, now, Franklin, your mama told you, boy, you're gonna either end up dead in a jail. 
you don't want to scare straight for now you don't end up not those side of your head bro franklin how about going to the jail was it really was no big deal and he was only 15. Program, it didn't change me it, it really don't feel no different since the majority of the show's participants were children at the time, it's hard to find the long-term results of their lives. However, based on what I found, it seems like a lot of them went on to live regular lives. If you search what happened to so-and-so from Beyond Scared Straight, most of what you find is clickbait leading you to an Instagram page of someone who we can't confirm was actually on the show. So if the program has been proven to be ineffective through various extensive studies across the past 30 years, why did they do a show about it? Well, that's because the guy who has built his entire career from this program, Arnold Shapiro, is fully convinced that this program is a good thing. It's Shapiro not, says bro. that all the extensive studies are totally irrelevant because they were done from 1967 to 1999. He also said that only the academic community believes proper counseling for youth offenders works. If society had the money or resources to do that, that would be great if every kid could have years of counseling, but it's not realistic. It would be interesting if A&E used the millions of profits from the show. I'm not gonna lie, bro. I'm gonna lie, like... Run up in the hood talking a couple things. It's like, it's like, I don't know. Like, just, just going up around certain kids. Not even it, just going up around, like, being a kid and growing up around certain kids. It's like, I don't know, bro. If you could just give them something to do, that'd be the thing, for real. Just give them something to do. Like, something fun, something educational to do. Something reliable to do instead of giving them nothing to do for real, but like, don't just give them no. I see in his map, I see what he's saying though. He like, if they out in the streets, put them on scared straight, but it ain't really doing that. No, he's used the offenders counseling, counseling. But since society doesn't have the money, too. right? Shapiro shrugs off the criticism of scared straight. There's every variation. It works for some, it doesn't work for some. But you can say that about any program that exists. Shapiro thinks that as long as it works for some, That's then it justifies the program. program no? And since the program exists, he is happy profiting off of it. He has openly admitted that the children they decide to be on the show are not the ones that they think will change, but rather the ones with the best personality. It really is based on their personalities he and what happens with them. We didn't have any belief that Brandon T from Michigan, who stood up to the officers and just kind of had a meltdown, would ever change. Even when the I tour was over, he got thrown out, but we still picked him because it was so explosive and we never saw anything like that before or since. Although, other kids have stood up to officers. It's amazing. When I went through high school or even college, you never thought you would disrespect a teacher or an authority figure, especially somebody in law enforcement, but these kids have no fear. It's crucial to question whether the pursuit of profits overshadows moral principles, as corporate interests often prioritize ratings and financial gain over the well-being of humans. But it makes it even worse when you consider that the people they are affecting are not consenting adults. These are children, and it's being broadcasted to millions of people to watch them suffer. They are being told that this is genuine rehabilitation, and they don't really have a choice to participate. Occasionally, they rebel so much that they get kicked out of the jail, but most of the time, they are trapped with no escape. The truth is, everyone wants a quick and cheap solution to an extremely complicated and layered social problem that is juvenile delinquency. But hey, as long as it works sometimes, it's all good. Right? Nope. No, it ain't. See y'all on the next video. Hey, that's kinda, that, that, that was a touchy topic. Badger CC always, every time, every time.